Hi, I'm Roger Mishrad. At Franklin Templeton Investments, we believe that citizens need to be informed about the resources that can help make higher education more affordable. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, the Ohlendorf Center, the Fidelco Group, United Water, making the planet sustainable is the best job on Earth, New Jersey's credit unions, banking you can trust. Bloomfield College, offering small classes and big opportunities since 1868. And by Barnabas Health. Life is better healthy. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Hi, Steve Adubato on the campus of Ramapo College. This is the 18th annual Rustberry Awards for Making a Difference. I'm here with Angelica Berry, um, the leader of the organization, the foundation, the Rustberry, Rust and Angelica Berry Foundation. Um, we just finished, but we're about to see some of the interviews that we're doing with the award winners, the Rustberry awardees for making a difference. Tell folks what they're about to see, Angelica, who they're about to see and why. You're going to see ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And when you think about what potential there is in each one of us to do something that's transformative, I think every person exemplifies this kind of hidden virtue. I, I say that this is something that people have that sometimes they just don't know how to show. And having these role models is not just inspiring, but it makes you follow a good example. Angelica always says it so well. You're about to meet some so-called ordinary people making an extraordinary difference. Here we go. We're here with one of our Rustberry awardees uh, for making a difference. Tawanda Jones is co-founder of Camden Sophisticated Sisters, which is? <laughs> it's a drill team or an organization that empowers the youth through the structure of drill team. Now, describe, first of all, where are you doing what you do every day? We practice inside of a huge water tower right in the Whitman Park area in Camden. How challenging is that? Very challenging. <laughs> um, it's not the ideal place, but it is the safe haven for the kids. Once they get in that water tower, all their problems are outside of the tower. Why'd you start this in the first place? Um, I felt like it was a need uh, for young ladies to start looking at themselves as, you know, being sophisticated, um, start respecting themselves. And then we started adding on the guys and letting them know that it's very important to be productive citizens and be distinguished. And, you know, I, I just love the children. Um, and Camden is, you know, that's my home at heart, you know, and I just want to make an impact on their lives. Describe their track record in terms of graduation. Well, I'm very excited that our track record is 100% graduation. They have to do 200 hours of community service hours per year, and um, they have to maintain their grades. If they were in high school? Yes, um, high school. Well, we start off three years old, and it goes all the way to college. But um, we're very active. If they start to backslide, we go to the schools to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And the Camden, gradu Camden graduation rate is actually a little below 50%, so it's amazing that the young women in Camden Sophisticated Sisters are doing so well. And by the way, you were recognized by CNN as a uh, hero of the year. Absolutely. Um, we were, I was one of the top 10, and I met some in uh, in incredible people, um, and they were just phenomenal, uh, down-to-earth people that genuinely care about humanity, you know. And I don't know what it is, but it's just that we stop loving one another. We stop caring. So to meet people that was on the same page, it was a big blessing. Speaking about amazing people, the people who have won the Rustberry Award for making a difference. Talk about those folks being on the stage today. Oh my God, uh, I'm just in awe right now. I'm just trying to converse with everyone here and just introduce myself and get to know their story, passing business cards out, and you know, just really want to connect and just 
keep that vibe going. Yeah, this is the uh, the after luncheon, if you will, the after party where all the uh, awardees are uh, celebrating and and connecting and networking and and Tawanda, it it's a special time for a lot of special people, and uh, you're gonna remember this day, aren't you? Oh, absolutely, for the rest of my life. I don't take any of this for granted. We congratulate you and uh, thank you for everything you do. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Same to you. We're here with one of our winners again for the Rustberry Award for Making a Difference, Dr. Brian Ullman, Dental Clinic Director, Eva's Village. Describe your work and the incredible difference you are making. Well, um, there are several clients at Eva's Village and uh, they all... Describe Eva's Village. Oh, this, uh, Eva's Village was founded early on with uh, to, to feed the hungry and they, they serve, golly, three or four hundred meals a day. Uh, for the homeless and needy and a lot of people that are trying to get their lives back in shape after uh, various addictions and um, the people that are sheltered in uh, the facility have the opportunity to come down to have any dental care uh, treated uh, and uh, we also service some of the, the local shelters in Patterson uh, anyone has a dental need. Doctor, why'd you do this? Well. I was born in Patterson. I have a, I have a, a affection for the city. Uh, I knew it uh, as a boy. We'd go down there all the time. But more importantly, um, my brother-in-law uh, uh, died homeless on the streets of Las Vegas uh, about uh, 15 years ago. And um, everyone in the family said, well, we probably could have done more. And uh, that was probably the motivating factor for me. Winning this award means what to you? I guess the recognition is, is kind of nice and hopefully people will help us more at the clinic and uh, we're always looking for volunteers, uh, dental volunteers, so um, maybe that'll, this will help promote that effort a little bit better. What's it mean to be with these other people who are making such a difference? You know, I'm, I'm just getting used to the idea and uh, I hope to be a part of it in years to come so that we can share some ideas and people have come up to me since um, since this this process all began today and it, it's really heartwarming to, to know them and the, the keynote speaker was remarkable and uh, Alpha was great uh, unbelievable and you did a great job so I appreciate that we thank you for everything you do doctor thank you so much Alpha let me ask you as our keynote speaker today someone who's actually been with us on one-on-one -on -one in public broadcasting before what did it feel like talking to this crowd and sharing your very powerful message today? Uh, thank you again, Steve, for uh, having me on, uh, on this and interviewing me. It felt incredibly special. This is one of the most important events I've attended um, in many, many, many weeks and months. Uh, the thought that there are so many people who are doing something so simple, sometimes something so complicated, but regardless of what it is, choosing to act, choosing to be in relationship is what I live for, it is what inspires me. And so I was actually really moved by knowing who I was talking to and felt very inspired and honored. So it was a real pleasure. For those who don't know, I briefly describe your organization. I run Rising Tide Capital. It's a nonprofit organization that's headquartered in Jersey City, New Jersey. We work with people who are really trying to move their ideas and their dreams into reality by working on a business. Uh, a lot of them have a skill or a talent, but they may not know how to manage that skill and how to create a real business and start moving it forward. So um, we have a lot of wonderful services and programs for entrepreneurs of all kinds. We raise money so that we can provide full scholarships for our entrepreneurs. So we hope that uh, people who are interested could check out risingtidecapital.org or give us a call or come and visit us at one of our offices. And the 18th anniversary of the Raspberry Awards for making a difference. Uh, what would you say to the foundation? I would say tremendous job well done. It takes an art and a science to do this, to raise people up, to tell stories, to inspire others, to continue to move and take those little acts of kindness very, very seriously. So I'm immensely grateful to them. Clearly the legacy of Raspberry and what he stood for is immense and what I'm trying to do in my work. So I'm overall just really, really impressed and grateful for what they do. Lisa Goldman and Rita Yohalam, two of our winners for the Raspberry Award for Making a Difference. Describe Opportunity Project and, and the difference you're making. Well, we're hoping that we're helping people who've had brain injury who need a place to help them move on with their lives and become independent individuals as much as they can. 
And that's what the clubhouse is all about. That's what Opportunity Project is all about. And both of you had sons who experienced serious brain injuries. Talk about that. Uh, my son had a brain tumor at 13. Unfortunately, he's, his brain tumor has recurred. But it was a choice of keeping him home and having him stay isolated or having him have a place where he could learn to be independent and learn to live on his own and learn vocational skills, language skills from other people who had brain injury as opposed to from therapists and rehab specialists. And the idea for Opportunity Project came from your experience, and your, yours directly as well. Well, it was really Lisa who had the experience of finding, she went searching for places. Where could Danny go? What would be right for Danny? I was just at the beginning of Gary's situation, just beginning to understand that. Gary was 19, experienced a car accident. And an automobile accident and trying to understand what was going to be next for him. And Lisa came with her idea of what she had seen and heard about in terms of in some type of more independent programming for people who have this brain injury, but not to be dealt with as, as uh, patients anymore, but as individuals, as independent individuals. And, and that's where we began. That's where it started. And the, I, the Rustbury Award for Making a Difference is um, it really it recognizes those who are helping those every day, do not seek the attention but the committee seeks them out. What does it mean to be recognized today? Uh, we're, I think, so honored because it's not anything we either of us ever expected. And to hear other people's stories as well and see what people can do on a one day, one time, one experience basis or something that's ongoing as we hope that Opportunity Project, it's, it's just an honor, just amazing. What was it like to be on that stage with everyone else? Very unexpected. When we started this project, it was strictly to give our sons a place to be and a place to go every day. Um, to be honored for that is unbelievable. And the honor really belongs to the people who are struggling to overcome the head injury as much as they can. Thank you both and congratulations. I'm here with Angelica Berry, who I opened the program with, but also, uh, Angelica, this is our $50,000 award winner, Joyce Jenkins, the director and founder of the Paul M. McGuire Family Health Center. Before I let Joyce speak, let's talk about why Joyce got recognized, right? Because she's doing extraordinary things. She's doing something that's uplifting, illuminating, inspiring, and I think is going to change the culture of New Jersey. Talk about your organization. Okay, um, I uh, operate the Paul and McGuire Family Health Center in Freehold, and we're a free clinic. We do not charge for anything that we do. All of the employees that work there are volunteers. No one is paid. So I have volunteer nurses, doctors, um, doctors that will see patients in their office at no charge. A lot of the local hospitals will do my blood work, and I, get, I have different organizations that I work with that will allow patients to come in for pap smears, mammographies, and things of that sort. Most of my patients are not, um, they all work, but they just don't have insurance. So they, it could be any human being who loses insurance for one reason or another. Why'd you do this, Joyce? Well, I started when I was in, um, going to school to become a nurse practitioner. I heard about this free clinic in Neptune. So I volunteered there for five years. And then after I graduated from my MP program, I decided that um, we would open a free clinic in the Freehold Barrel along with my pastor. My pastor here sort of come to me and said, what do you think about having a free clinic in Freehold? I said, mm. I said, I think I have a trailer too. So we took the trailer from Neptune. We moved it to Freehold. We we, opened, we started open one night a week, and then we went to two nights a week, and that's what we're doing now. We probably could go to three nights a week, but I don't have enough volunteers. Let me ask you, before I go back to Angelica, when you were announced as the $50,000 winner and you got up on that stage, and we announced our $5,000 winners, right, Angelica, and then the $25,000 winner and the $35,000 winner, and there was only one left, and that was the $50,000 winner. What was it like being on stage with all those other amazing people? It was very difficult because they all have very exciting stories. And I think when you volunteer, you do it from your heart. So everyone that's on that stage is doing something because of her compassion. It's not because they're getting paid or what they do. It's a compassion that's grown in you. And when you feel like you want to do something to help people, it's a compassion. It's not something you can fake. So um, I think just because everybody is so compassionate about what they do, it was really very out, you know, uplifting. So I felt like even though I won, 
I really feel like I want for all the volunteers in the clinic. It's not just me, because I have people who work just as hard as I do. So it's, it's a collaborating collaborative type thing. It's not just money that I want, but the clinic one in itself. So it's for everybody who works so hard in the clinic. How's that, Angelica? I think that's the DNA of this award, and that's the DNA behind each winner and nominee, that compassion that you identified. That's why it started 18 years ago. Thank you. Congratulations, Joyce. Thank you very much. We're here with Zamir Hassan, who is the founder of Muslims Against Hunger, one of our award winners. Zamir, let me ask you, describe your organization and, and the difference you make. Uh, you know, Steve, uh, we feed the homeless, but uh, the program is not about uh, food. It's about engaging communities. We build volunteer communities, uh, who, uh, and then they go and do the feeding programs. So, so that's our, all our program is all about. But it started after 9-11. Why? Uh, you know, it really started before 9-11, and it had expanded after that because there seems to be more interest. And one thing I realized, that the faith communities are, all agree the hunger has no dispute. Everybody uh, is uh, in each faith community. So it's easy to bring the faith people together. And so we started, uh, I started from my own community, Muslims, and then now the program has grown into a faith uh, against hunger, where we, we have uh, three synagogues regularly uh, feeding uh, people with us. Uh, we have a Hindu temple which regularly feeds. So basically tonight, a uh, Hindu temple is making food for us to distribute in Harlem. Describe what it uh, means to win the Russ Berry Award for making a difference. Uh, you know what? It, it raises the awareness of poverty, and that's how I look at that. And uh, it's, uh, to me, it's not acceptable that we have 49 million people in this country, uh, and they don't know where their next meal is going to come from. And in New Jersey, 10% of the population is considered hungry, and they don't know where their next meal is going to come from. And it's, this is, to me, as a faith person, not acceptable. And all I'm trying to do is mobilize all the faith groups to get them uh, get together and eliminate uh, hunger from our communities, uh, hopefully, in future. Congratulations, Amir. Thank you very much. We're here with one of our winners, one of our very special winners, Keely Freeman, Executive Director of Sierra House, which does? Provides housing for homeless youth between the ages of 18 and 25 years old and their babies. How'd you get into this? Why'd you do it? Volunteering. I never thought that I would start a nonprofit. Um, I worked on Wall Street as a stockbroker. I always grew up wanting to make a lot of money. And one day I volunteered at a shelter in Newark, and it changed my life. For some people, it's like a near-death experience or an illness. For me, it was volunteering. Seeing those children and knowing they had nowhere to go. And I went home to my mom and I said, hey, we have to do something. And you know how children are. She's like, okay, whatever, do something. And I did. I took all my savings. I brought a really big house so that children will always have a place to go. And that's what Sierra House is. Describe the impact you've had. Well, over the course of the years, we've served over 150 homeless young women. And about 87% of them have transitioned from homelessness to an apartment of their own. And not just transition into an apartment, but these young ladies have gotten jobs, they have gotten into college, into their GEDs, into different trade schools such as nursing programs. And How good does that feel? It feels amazing. It feels even more amazing when I see a young lady or I get invited to like a college graduation. And that is why you recognized for the Russ Berry Award for making a difference. Describe being on that stage. You're one of the first people we recognized today, right? Yes. What was it like? Uh, it's an amazing feeling. I don't do this for recognition. I do it from my heart. And just to see that there's foundations like Russ Berry out there that's keeping his memory vibrant and alive, it, it, really, it really warms my heart. We are here with our $35,000 winner for the Russ Berry Award for making a difference, Edith Kuhn, the co-founder of Raphael's Life House, which is? In Elizabeth, New Jersey. And does what? Houses homeless pregnant women and their babies when born. Why'd you start this? Why'd you co-found it? Uh, because I was a volunteer at St. Joseph's Social Service Center in Elizabeth. And at that particular time, uh, there was no place for women after they had their babies. They could go to a, place, a shelter if they were pregnant, but they couldn't go any place with the baby. And so they were placed in hotels or boarding houses, and they didn't 
do it well, they put them in with men, very often who were alcoholics or drug addicts and so on. So the women weren't able to sleep at night, they were afraid. So they were coming into St. Joseph's Hall, putting their baby to sleep and putting their heads down and going to sleep. So we started questioning them and found out that they had no place to go. And the impact you're having on the lives of these women? Yes, there's been over 600 women who have stayed with us in the 21 years. And our staff is Covenant House, New Jersey, and they were able to purchase the building for us through the Peter Simon, because we were going to get kicked out by the archdiocese. Everybody jumped in to help. Yes. yes. And let me ask you this, what was it like to be recognized with a $35,000 Rustbury Award for making a difference? Well, it was wonderful. <laughs> I mean, just... What's it like on that stage with those other winners? Oh, wonderful. I, I was really very proud to, to be included. Yeah, I'm not going to say I felt humbled. That isn't what I felt. I felt proud. <laughs> you should be proud, and we're proud of you and, and your colleagues and everything you do every day. You're the inspiration. Well, thank you. We're with one of our favorite uh, former guests on One on One, Sarah Ann Rothberg. Uh, Comedy Cures, one of the past honorees here at the Rustbury Award for Making a Difference, and you're here with the awardees this year. And by the way, today's a special day for you. It is. It is the 15th anniversary of my first chemo comedy party, which is what inspired me to start the Comedy Cures Foundation. So when I woke up today, I said, what am I going to do to commemorate my first chemo comedy party and the genesis of the Comedy Cures Foundation? I'm going to go back to my roots and see all the people that believed in my mission when I was bald and 98 pounds and had aggressive cancer and wanted to start this charity. So I just hightailed myself over in the rain and I started to see such old friends like you and Angelica and Janet Sharma and a lot of people. And we already made a deal. So we talked about it today, we're networking, and so God willing it all works, I'm gonna bring a big Comedy Cures program for Sandy relief victims. So we're gonna do it. Um, the last year's honoree, Regina Coyle, uh, and I just met through Janet Sharma, and we were like, why don't we do this program already? So because of the Russ Berry Foundation and this beautiful event, I think we just uh, made a shidduch. We made a little match for... That is uh, an expression, a Jewish expression for? A match. We made a match. We made a match. That's what Angelica Berry does. She brings people together, and she brought us together a few years back, and you keep coming back on PBS, and we love having you, and congratulations. We're here with our $25,000 Russ Berry awardee for making a difference, Joseph Blythe who heads up an organization called Meals with a Mission, who makes, and they make a huge difference. What do you do? We prepare meals that are then distributed to local shelters who take care of either the homeless, the low income, the uh, battered women's shelters. We also work with housing authorities in Garfield, where we prepare meals and bring it there and they distribute it to their residents. And we work with the Children's Hospital over in Hackensack, Tomorrow's Children's Fund, where we do a healthy living program for those children and their families who going for treatment all day and then we give them a meal to send home. We give them a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Why'd you start this in the first place? Well, it's all divine inspiration. I'm just told, what, I'm just told to do it and I do it. And I, I, selfishly, I wanted to have a restaurant one day. My father-in-law my father had a restaurant. My wife grew up in the business, so she wasn't keen on the idea of me you know, living that life. So that sat idle for years and then I was just inspired one day that I can have a little bit of both. I can help God's people and then I can have my little restaurant now we have 120 volunteers that cook five days a week, and we're, we're doing great things. Now, when Joseph came up on the stage, I mean, you have to remember, I mean, we're here at the after luncheon with all the honorees, all the winners, and they're celebrating, they're connecting with each other, but it was a really great feeling um, at this ceremony, and, and Joseph joined the other winners. Um, but I want to ask you, what did it feel like being on that stage with other really terrific people who've also won today. Well, it was really great because you're sitting and hearing the list of names and you're like, am I going to be in the first rank, second rank? I mean, in the end, it, it, we, all, we all did great things. It was like, wow, he did something great. And wow, he did, she did something great. He did something, you know, maybe I shouldn't even be here, you know, because everyone's doing great things. Amazing. Yeah, it was really, uh, I mean, it, it, I just love the, what we can have moving forward here, maybe working together and a lot of synergies already. I mean, we already know some people who have heard of us and then we can work together or, or they have an outlet, which we already kind of serve you know, that design, so it was really nice. And it was really the first time we're being recognized for someone out of our, our you know, comfort zone. We're, you know, we, uh, it, it's just really nice. It was Keep up the good work, and congratulations, Joseph. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So there you have it. 
some amazing people making a difference. Angelica, 18 years, what do we do for an encore? Well, first of all, 18 is symbolic. In the Jewish tradition, 18 is a high. That means that it's a significantly auspicious year. And I think that it's a year of harvest. You know, when you see 18 years of cohorts, I say this is probably a time to look and reflect and say how rewarding it is to have 2,500 people out there doing good things together. It's 2,500 people who have won, people who have nominated together, been nominated together. This is what Russ and you had in mind 18 plus years ago. Except that we had one unintended um, consequence, and that was that we didn't realize that we didn't just invest in individuals, that we were investing in a network that actually gets to collaborate, gets to network, gets to build the field together, and I didn't expect that at all. And finally, the ripple, talk about it. I think that one person doing one good thing, touching many lives, and having 2,500 people doing wonderful things that have many, many ripples. Like I said, this has the force of a tsunami. Thank you, Angelica. We're honored to be a part of this on public broadcasting. Thank you, Steve, for doing this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, the Ollendorf Center, the Fidelco Group, United Water, New Jersey's Credit Unions, Bloomfield College, and by Barnabas Health. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And by Commerce Magazine. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. I will. It's the oath of those strong in character. A call to build our own dreams, not someone else's. Doing whatever it takes to create a better way. This is Health Republic, a not-for-profit co-op health plan created to give us control of our own health care. So we all have the support we need when it's time to say, I will. Health Republic. Live independently healthy.